here. Thank you, Dale. All right. Um, on behalf of the Brockman family, I want to thank you all for being here today uh, to celebrate the life of my mom, Leon K. Brockman. Um, I'm Danny. That's what she called me. Uh, I'm her first son. Uh, I'm sometimes known as Daniel when I misbehave. Uh, I'll try not to misbehave today. Um, today um, is, is my birthday, and my mom's birthday was Monday. She would have been her 92nd birthday. But we've always celebrated our birthdays together, and we're not stopping now. Um, I'd like us all to sing happy birthday to my aunt, mom, Leon. Uh, <laughs> Say to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, dear Moyon, happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> happy birthday. What a way to celebrate a birthday. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Um, so one of the things my mom was uh, known for is um, she knew how to celebrate well, both at birthdays and other excuses for parties. Um, she learned it from her mom, Frances, and my mom was often known as the hostess with the mostest. She, um, Thankfully, these skills have been passed on to my sister, Jan. You'll be hearing from her later on. So, <laughs> so as, an, as an example, 22 years ago this week was my mom's 70th birthday. And she held that uh, party. Her birthday party was held at her sister Anne's house, just up the hill from our house. And uh, mom would be proud to tell you uh, that that party was such a raging success that the Laguna Beach Police Department came and shut it down. <laughs> that didn't stop her, however. She waited for the police to leave, and then they partied on, as you would expect. <clears throat> so recently, um, we, got, we were asked some questions about mom and her gender identity and things like that. So <laughs> anyway, so you know, they, they asked, OK, was, you know, was her gender identity the same as her birth identity? Yeah. And if my dad were here today, he would be really pissed off because somebody would <laughs> ask his wife that question. So um, I know what my mom would answer. She actually had many identities. She, she would have held her neck like this and go, well, dear, I am a daughter. I am a sister. I am a mom, I am a grandmother, I am a great-grandmother. I don't know about any of those other things on your list, though. <laughs> so, um, some of you might think that the uh, name Leon is a little unusual, but there's some family history in it I want to let you know about. Uh, her maternal grandmother was Jessie Leon White, and that's where she got her, her name. Um, and that name has been carried on in our family, and some of these uh, Leones are here today. So there's granddaughter Chelsea Leon, who's here today. We have uh, great-grandchildren Adelaide Leon and Hazel Leon, and finally we have Margot Leon, the great-granddog. So um, we, call, we call all of them the little Leones, and each of them will carry on the legacy of my mom. <laughs> um, things I remember about my mom, um, most, the biggest thing I think was her unwavering love for each of us. Um, she, she loved God. Um, she led a life of serving others, being a teacher and that. Um, she loved a good party that we know. She loved her country very much. Uh, she loved limericks. I don't know if any of them will be telling the limericks today. Okay, well, that'll be another. That'll be at the after party, maybe. She loved music and singing. 
So she, she is really uh, kind of the end of her generation. I think uh, two of her, her close and favorite cousins uh, are still with us. Uh, Peggy Cooper, I think Peggy, you're here today. Am I right? Peggy, thanks for being here. Thank you. And also her, her cousin, Carol. So the, you, you guys need to carry on this generation, please. Thank you, Peggy. Um, so um, I wanted to uh, tell a Bible verse um, that uh, I think is appropriate this time. So Isaiah 431. It's from the King James Version, Old Testament. And bec because my mom was old, we read from the Old Testament only. <laughs> <coughs> And, and here's the verse. It's a quick one. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount on the wings of eagles. <sighs> they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not be faint. Mom loved Lord Jesus, and she would tell each of you that you should too. Um, Mom loved family and people. Her body and strength are now renewed. She flies on the wings of eagles. She walks and runs again. I'd like to say some thanks uh, to somebody here. Uh, I would like to recognize and thank Arlene, who has been mom's caretaker and nurse for the last seven years. <laughs> Arlene has been an outstanding and loving caretaker to mom as well as the support for my dad. Um, Arlene has been at mom's side around the clock and helped her stay happy and comfortable, even through some difficult challenges that my mom had. Um, uh, mom made it to 91 plus years, and uh, she definitely wouldn't have made it that long without Arlene's help. Thank you. Our family has really been touched by the outpouring from this community. This is the community that she spent most of her life in, and I, I noticed that you know, people have responded, her former students, t people she taught with, things like that, and we've just loved that. I'd just be curious, are there any of my mom's students here today, former students? A lot of you, thank you, yes. And uh, any other coworkers that she worked with? Oh my gosh. My gosh, thank you all for being here. So I have a great amount of honor for, for teachers and uh, respect for you, and that was my mom's career. So thank you, thank you all for that. So um, I also want to um, tell you a story that my mom told me um, from her classroom. She was teaching a biology lesson to her kindergartners, and she, and she uh, asked the students, can anybody use urinate in a sentence? And little Billy, I think little Billy is here today. <laughs> little Billy waves his hand. I know, I know. Little Billy's right there. <laughs> little, li little Billy says, you're an eight, but if you had bigger boobs, you'd be a 10. <laughs> Thank you for that, Billy. <laughs> Not surprisingly, Billy got an A in the class. <laughs> and my mom was always a 10. Um, love you, Mom. Next up, I'd like to introduce Jan Elaine Shoemaker. Thank you. My wing girl. Wow, look at all of you. Mom always made me laugh and made me feel special. When I was a hairless two-year-old, she taped the bow to the fuzz on my head, setting me apart from my brothers with their butch haircuts. When I was eight years old, I really wanted the Casper the Ghost costume from Sprouse Reitz. But mom said, no, everybody's going to be in a dime store outfit. So mom went home, and she fashioned me a huge top hat out of cardboard. And, 
and it went over my head and my shoulders and my chest. Halloween morning, Mom painted a face on my belly and sent me off to El Moro to enter the costume contest where I sucked my belly in and out on stage to do, so the face would talk just like Mom showed me. So, so last night, last night it sounded like a great idea to paint my belly, and my friend Verge, the voice of reason, said, I don't think that's such a good idea. So thank Verge that you don't have to see that. Mom always made a big deal about our birthdays. On our day, as she called it, we got to pick the menu. For my February birthday, this meant Mom searching high and low for fresh strawberries to put on my shortcake, and Dad barbecuing hamburgers in the rain, while Mom reminded him, Leonard, you can always cook it more, but you can never uncook it. <laughs> Saturday mornings, you would find Mom with curlers in her hair, ear glued to the landline, listening to all the breaking news. Baba Ann and Elaine would give her the Knickerbocker hotline updates. Her friend Corky from St. Catherine's Church would read her the list of approved movies from her most recent League of Decency pamphlet. <laughs> Katie and other friends would call to say, have you heard? <laughs> Mom would grab her neck and listen intently as she waved the wooden spoon to remind us to behave ourselves. In junior high, I handed Mrs. Drever my permission slip to go to the school dance. Mrs. Drever opens the envelope, starts laughing. The note read, Jan has my permission to cut a cool rug tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Wednesday nights in the 70s, the house was filled with rowdy teenagers gathering for Bible study, but mostly to eat the endless bowls of popcorn that mom popped throughout the night over the open flame in the kitchen. Bible study ended with a dozen kids in the jacuzzi and about a six pack of girls crammed into bed with mama watching a little house on the prairie. Mom's love of music ranged from gospel to naughty. With Anne playing the piano and friends and family singing along, the song could quickly move from this little light of mind to roll me over in the clover, roll me over, well. We'll do that one later. Uh, this very church was very special to mom. She taught Sunday school and led the children singing. She was concerned that during the passing of the offering plate, people would feel uncomfortable, like, well, I don't have the money to give. So she approached the deacons, and she said, I would like Tom to make an offering box to put in the sanctuary in the back so people don't feel the pressure. Well, the box is right back there behind Shuey still. And, um, well, they kept passing the plate. Well, Mom didn't like that. That defeated the whole purpose. So Mom and Dad and I are sitting down here in one of the pews. Mom always had this big, gigantic purse. She reaches in and pours a load of pennies into the tray. And just, just picture my dad. Just picture, I mean, I mean, she might have got the belt that day, I don't know. <laughs> um, oh, okay. And there was another uh, church member, Elizabeth Ogg, and she was going to help the children's ministry by recycling cans. So every time we drank a beer up on San Remo, my mom would say, good for you, that's for Elizabeth Ogg in the church. <laughs> Mom had a gift for making you feel like you could accomplish anything. When I was dragging my feet after high school, she had said, honey, go to Saddleback and get a few units. No one can ever take those away from you. She was forever the encourager. Mom was the funniest, most positive person I have ever known. Even when she would proclaim, it's hell to get old, she'd have a sparkle in her eyes and a smile on her cute face. Mama always said, my Leonard can do anything. Mom could too, and she did. Mom and Dad, happy trails to you until we meet again. Oh, John? <laughs> Should I stay and interpret for you? <laughs> I, I, maybe. <laughs> 
So I want to thank uh, Andy for playing the piano, Keith for the flowers, and um, Ar Arlene for keeping my mom and dad well past their expiration date. So, um, yeah, my, my mom used to say that, um, I, well, I, I wish we could just go together. You know, they, they um, uh, passed 14 months apart, and <laughs> they, when she said that, I'm thinking, well, Mom, if you keep driving, that you're going to get your wish. <laughs> so the last time she drove, um, she, um, well, the way I found out was I was down in New Orleans. My sister Jan calls, and she goes, well, I want to keep you in the loop, and I know you want to be kept in the loop, but uh, I want to tell you that Mom um, parked the car in the garage. And I go, is there more? <laughs> and she goes, well, she didn't open the door first. <laughs> so that, the, next, the next day, I, I call my dad, and, and I, he answers the phone, and I, I go, um, I'll have a cheeseburger and fries. And he goes, what? And I go, well, I heard you, you opened a drive through <laughs> And so, so he, he goes, you're a smart ass. <laughs> um, I wonder where I got it from. Um, anyway, so my mom knew how to have fun. The songs, limericks, hats, costumes, jokes, entertainment, food, and drink were only some of the tools she had in her magic brain. So Andy remembers this. When you walked into the front door, um, she was taking your drink order before you got to the top of the stairs, you know, and she, she would have whatever you wanted. So um, anyway, it, 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 her goals were to both entertain and educate. Um, it, if she knew that if you, she could entertain you, you would pay closer attention to whatever it was she was trying to teach you. She wanted to get you to have a good time. If you were having a good time, she was going to have a better time, and the whole thing would escalate and, and um, it, it would get louder. <laughs> um, into laughter and song. Um, our family gathered at least once a week at a rotation of relatives' homes for years. One night, Mom decided to educate us on the fact that tigers only mate once a year. Instantly, my Uncle Rick bursts out, that's what makes them so mean. <laughs> <laughs> so then, the, it, laughter and songs around the piano, Andy Ann would play the piano, and um, all, the, all these songs uh, would come out. And uh, if any of you want to hear some of the songs done by my mom and her sisters, it's on YouTube under the Knickerbocker Girls. And you can see them. <laughs> that it, she filmed them a number of years ago, and so uh, it turned out pretty cool. Um, laughter and song were a, th were a big theme. Um, you know, it, my, my love of music came from music is this fun thing, that it's a way to express joy or sadness. It, it's, uh, you know, it, 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 something deeper than um, just a performance or something, a, a real joy. Different story at my, my dad's parents' home. Um, <laughs> the Brockman's place in Santa Ana they, with the Dodgers on TV and Vin Scully's voice getting louder and louder as my grandpa's hearing just got worse and worse. Um, a bean casserole and, and meatloaf on the menu. Or my dad's sister, Aunt Mert, and Uncle Dick's place in Whittier, where the Brockmans were introduced to canned ham for the first time. <laughs> These were all thoughtful, caring people. Um, but uh, the Knickerbockers knew how to throw a party. <laughs> I believe what happened was um, sort of like the My Fair Lady story. Um, my mom taught my dad how to have a good time. <laughs> um, it, even though he, he sort of acted like, you know, oh, 
you know, he wasn't sure about it. He, he was totally in. Um, so mom loved reading books and loved reading books to others. She would read them to us in the station wagon on long camping trips using voices of the people or animals in the story. In her classroom, she would dress in the costumes and act, act out the characters she was reading aloud. She would get real tears during the sad parts of the story, and you know that every first grader in the room was paying complete attention in total silence, wondering what Mrs. Brockman might do next. Mom lost the ability to speak more than a few words, yet the few words she spoke were appropriate to the conversation. When I would visit to her, um, I would read to her. She would still cry at the sad parts and smile at the funny ones. She read to, to us then, then I read to her, so a, a full and complete circle. And uh, so yesterday, um, we saw this full and complete circle because the, the urn that uh, my brother made for her, we didn't expect this to happen, but um, after we did the service, we were just going to go over and visit uh, my dad's tombstone. Well, they had already prepared the hole in the ground for the, my mom, and we saw mom and dad get reunited, and it was lovely. Um, and the southern gentleman who, who was putting her in the ground had a sense of humor and, um, and, and gave, gave that moment uh, great dignity, so it, it was lovely. Um, Having grown up with my mom and dad, I thought everyone's parents loved each other like they did. Sure, they had disagreements, like when mom dressed dad as a bee when it wasn't a costume party. <laughs> <clears throat> but always they worked together as a team. They taught us five to work together as a team. <clears throat> it was Leonard and Leon that produced the foundation for the five of us to do what we're doing now, to work through this hard part of parting with our parents in unity, without conflict. <laughs> I'm finding out how rare that is. Um, so bless you, Mom and Dad. Bless you, Danny, Tom, Jan, Beth. Um, in the words of Pearl Brockman, but my, my dad's mom, um, you are made of strong stuff. You will be okay. Thanks for everybody being here. I'm Beth, the youngest of the Brockman original five. I'm here to talk about the amazing lady I was privileged to call mom. Some of you think that having five kids is a little crazy, but mom and mom had told dad she wanted five kids before they ever got married. If mom wanted something, she pretty much got it. Dad called that being locked in. <laughs> mom was smart and clever, which you have to be raising five children. When we were babies, mom would put a handful of Cheerios in our crib before she went to bed at night. This would give her an extra 15 minutes to get ready in the morning. We all practiced the same trick with our own children. We all had responsibilities. There were 12 years between Danny, the oldest, and me, the youngest. When mom and dad would go out for an evening, they would leave us to babysit ourselves. The rule was that if we all got along and there was no fighting, we'd each get a quarter. Mom was smart because if we did fight, we wouldn't tell her because we wanted to get our quarter. She didn't have to hear one more sibling squabble. I call that smart. While at camp at Forest Home, where I now live, the childcare people brought me to mom because I'd stuck a pebble up my nose and they didn't know how to get it out. Mom quietly just took me by the hand and led me into the dining room where she sprinkled pepper into my nose, causing me to sneeze the pebble out. Again, smart. Mom was superwoman. 
she was able to get five kids up, ready for school, feed us a complete breakfast, which meant bacon, eggs, toast, juice, oatmeal, etc. She'd have all the lunches ready, and we'd all be out the door on time to attend at times three different schools. Then she would teach a full day, come home, make a sit-down dinner for the seven of us. We were a family of seven. However, there were rarely seven people at the table. Mom welcomed everyone, and we often had friends join us. I remember on Sunday mornings, mom would go through the house and open doors and count bodies to see how many pancakes she was going to be making that morning. Mom loved a party and loved to have people over. Again, superwoman. Mom was also an encourager. When there were difficult times, she, had the, she would say the right things. If you got hurt, she would say, oh, honey, I know how that hurts. And somehow that seemed to help, and we still say that today. I remember my very first year teaching. I got hired 24 hours before the students walked through the door. I was overwhelmed setting up my classroom and trying to figure out what I was going to teach. Mom handed me a container of manipulatives, math pages, stories, etc., and said, do this tomorrow. She was an expert and gave me everything I would need to have a successful first day. I'm sure there are others of you who taught with her, and she did the same thing for you. She encouraged you, as well as hundreds of students who came through her classroom. There was a naughty side of mom um, that some of you may have known. One time, dad was having a church board meeting at the house. Mom and I left to have some ice cream. And on the way back, mom said, we should toilet paper all their cars. <laughs> so we snuck in quietly, got the toilet paper, and toilet papered at each and every car that had arrived. Then we went upstairs into the bedroom to go watch Little House on the Prairie while looking out the window and watching the people surprise as they found their toilet papered cars. There were other naughty things about mom, but we'll leave it at that for today. Mom was one tough lady and was never one to complain. Late in her teaching career, she slipped on our driveway and broke both sides of her ankle, ending up with a plate and four screws. Uh, she, she was bound to a wheelchair for eight weeks while it healed. Did that stop her? Absolutely not. She ran the entire first grade class from her wheelchair. Mom was never sick, so she had plenty of sick days. She just had a sub come to be her legs. Mom continued to be tough right up to the end, although she'd say getting old wasn't for sissies. After Dad passed away 14 months ago, I did my best to come every other Friday and spend the night with Mom. I'd sleep in the twin bed that Jan had set up next to her bed. Mom was always happy to see someone throughout the night next to her and looked surprised in the morning that you were still there. <laughs> Though her words were few, at the end she knew each and every one of us, um, which was a true blessing. A memory I will cherish forever was about two weeks before Mama passed. I walked into the room, got close, and said, Hi, Mama. I'm happy to see you. She reached up and rested her hand on my face. Though she didn't have the words, her touch said everything. The morning mom passed again, I was there in that twin bed, this time with Arlene too. Mom woke me up to let me know that she was leaving with a couple of really big breaths. And just like dad, we ushered her into heaven to be with Jesus and to be reunited with my dad. Words can't express how deeply loved we all felt growing up and how much we knew we were loved by our mom and dad. They are so missed, but will forever remain in our hearts. I love you, mom and dad.
we have Chelsea speaking on the behalf of all the grandkids. Am I holding this for you? Grandma, it's hard to put into words everything she is, everything she was. She was sweet, funny, quirky, hilarious with a crazy imagination. She was a kid at heart, always. Maybe that's why she chose teaching. It wasn't to educate about the basics, math or science, though she did that well. It was to keep us kids, kids. I think that that's what she enjoyed most. She had a playful heart with a side of respect and a dash of discipline. I was fortunate, lucky, and so grateful. When I was younger, I got to spend a lot of time with my grandparents, which then became a priority as an adult. If I had an extra $300, or even if I didn't, I spent it on a plane ticket or gas to come to Lagunas, usually with Jack in the passenger seat. Laguna being on San Remo, being with them was all we wanted to do, family. When we still lived here, I got to sometimes stay at grandma's and go up the hill with her to school, which I also attended. There was a time I was waiting in big blue in front of the kindergarten area, and I was playing with a Barbie earring, and I may have got it stuck in my ear. Having grown up, hearing about the time Beth, though I thought it was Jan, got the rock step up her nose, I knew grandma would not be amused and Pepper would not work in my ear. I remember panicking. This would not be something grandma would think clever or smart. I vividly remember walking across her walking across the parking lot towards Big Blue, and I got it out according to my memory, which my brothers tease me about all the time, so it might not be accurate, as her hand touched the door handle. <sighs> Safe. Another one of those cherished nights, I got to stay at Grandma's before school. She had me pack my own lunch, discipline. I asked her, what should I pack? <laughs> Whatever you want, it's your lunch. <laughs> well, being a Brockman and actually being a kid, I took full advantage of this, testing what she meant. So I packed a tuna fish sandwich and added a sprinkle of Aunt P's chocolate chips. We both laughed. Yay! <laughs> so much fun! Well, except till the next day. Lunch came around, and I think this is the only time I ever had lunch with my grandma while at school. She sat me down with a few of her teacher friends to watch. Oh, well, you're on your watch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, till the next day, lunch came around, and I think this is the only day I had lunch with my grandma while at school. She sat me down with a few of her teacher friends to watch me eat the sandwich, <laughs> the whole sandwich, in the hot, hot sun. She was laughing the whole time. I was not. Lesson learned and thankful there's going to be tacos after all of this because my vote was tiny little tuna fish chocolate sandwiches. <laughs> so I rarely saw my grandparents have a disagreement, but one time grandma and grandpa were fighting or disagreeing or whatever. Grandma says, Chels, hand me my purse which is no small task. Her weird worn leather, I think it weighed, weighed 20 pounds, and she got a stick of gum, which I had been told my whole life, ladies don't chew gum. And she chewed that piece of gum loudly, smacking against her gums. Grandpa, Leon, you made your point. <laughs> they giggled and whatever they were fighting about disappeared. To this day, I do not chew gum. I spoke at Grandpa's service, mentioning that there was always a place at the table for anyone for dinner. Well, after dinner, there was also a place to play games. I don't remember a night where decks of cards weren't brought out. It was either Pounce with Papa Nick, used to stand up to play, or Tiles, to some of you, Rummy Cube. These moments were some of the only times I heard Grandma say naughty words. The table was filled with chaos and conversation at dinner. The dinner table, though still filled with laughter, the after dinner table, though still filled with laughter, was filled with fierce competition. You better know the rules of the game. Make sure to set a timer for Ryan. 
play a smiley, fight, smiley face, what do we say? Two from your hand, not from your bush. We would play for hours when we were younger. Time to go to bed. We were kids. It was her singing us songs. Jesus loves you. Yes, he does. Stories about the jinkum, my personal favorite, or the burglar boy. As we got older, it was a sweet, love you, Chels. See you in the morning. Once Grandpa would casually go to bed, indicating it was our last game. <sighs> I can't believe I'm not going to be able to walk up the stairs at San Remo and hear the door echoing against the windows <laughs> and yelling up, saying hi to Grandma and Grandpa, and them ask, is that you, Chels? Making my way up the dust stairs, where either Nick or Ben would injure themselves every Christmas, or as a young child, Josh would fall down. A box of seized candies, waiting, hopefully without worms. <laughs> but like the story of the jinkum, we may feel like we're walking in a circle right now, but we thank goodness we know about the Goodle Fump. Oh, you don't? Well, you don't know, and I don't know, and nobody else knows. But I will tell you, you will pull one leg forward and bring the other, the other one up. Ugh. And we're going to be able to walk again. Lastly, I'd like to apologize to my Uncle Tom. Some of you were here for Grandpa's service where I explained the original five with the bookends. Danny and Beth, three weirdos in the middle, made a lot of sense to me. But apparently Tom does not identify as a weirdo. And I want to respect how he feels. But he's up next, so you guys can judge for yourselves. Yeah. No, I got it. Yeah, here comes my prop. <laughs> oh. All right, all right. Hi, I'm Thomas Leonard Brockman. I'm the sixth person to talk about my mom today. Um, I probably wrote 30 pages of different stories and things, and I was all over the place writing, talking about the stupid stuff I'd done, and, um, and I'd get forgiven for most everything. Um, and then I found, I found this photo, and I changed my changed my whole speech. So I'm not going to tell you what a great teacher and mom she was. You've already heard all that. I'm going to take you on a trip through time, like the Twilight Zone. Wind the clock back to June 8, 1952. I've based my story on this photo I found at mom and dad's house. They're leaving the church and getting rice thrown at them. A young couple in love, carefree, no idea what was ahead in their future. A simpler life. An average house cost $8,000. Gas was 18 cents a gallon. A new Corvette cost $3,600. And a postage stamp was three cents. And love was free. Do you know why they throw rice at a wedding? It goes back to the ancient Romans. It means a wish of luck for the future. Wishing the couple a life full of joy. Rice was thought to help women get pregnant. As you look at the photo, you can see they threw the rice. Mom and dad had a life full of joy, and the pregnant thing worked. Five kids. <laughs> now we wind the clock up to 1976. Every night, seven of us would sit down for dinner. The placemats on the table, a bouquet of daisies in the center, two candles. We would say the blessing, we would talk about our day. This makes a tight family, and you'll never meet a tighter family than us. Okay, wind the clock to 1981. This is us. One of mom's happiest times was camping. We'd cram 10 people in a van and head out on an adventure into Mexico, a thousand mile trip. 
wind the clock to yesterday, 2023. We put mom back in her van, her happy place. So I am here today to start a new tradition. It's why not throw rice at a funeral? I have prepared a special gift for you, a bottle and a bag of rice. And I'm not saying throw the rice here at the church. I want you to take the rice and throw it up into the heavens tonight and wish Leonard and Leon a life full of joy. And the, the slideshow you're going to see, uh, my dad created years ago, and it's all him. He made his slideshow for his funeral. He, Mom was already ready in the can, ready to go. So it's pretty special that a 90-year-old can make an Apple computer work, and uh, that I can't. <laughs> So enjoy watching it. <laughs> 